Hello there, and welcome to this video highlighting one of the new features or enhancements to the Cisco Secure Firewall. This is one in a series of videos created to discuss and demonstrate the latest updates within the 6.7 release of software. Here, I'll talk about and show you change management enhancements for audit logging and configuration previews. We all know how important it is to be able to track activity that takes place on our network. That's why we capture logs and events in order to troubleshoot issues, analyze trends and investigate breaches or other malicious activity. It's also vital that we're able to track the activity that occurs on critical systems, such as our security platforms. That's why the Firepower Management Center provides audit logging capabilities to capture the actions that administrators of the solution perform in their daily duties. For the 6.7 release, we have enhanced the audit trail of user activity on the Firepower Management Center, as well as expanding the list of components that can be highlighted in the configuration preview, which can be viewed before deploying a policy to a managed device. The value this adds to customers is a clearer, simplified audit view so that user activity can be tracked and recorded for security or compliance reasons, and a more detailed configuration preview allows the user to double check their configuration changes before deploying them to a managed device, therefore reducing the chances of misconfiguration errors. Now included in the audit logs are changes to the following components, routing policies, firepower threat defense platform settings, VPN, DHCP, dynamic DNS, pre-filter policies, quality of service policies, and objects such as network, port, URL, and VLAN tags. Configuration previews now include changes applying to security zones and interface group objects. Let's take a look at these enhancements in a little more detail. Users familiar with previous versions will be aware of the option that allows you to preview the configuration changes that have been made before deploying them to a managed device. To do this, we navigate to Deploy and Deployment. In this example, we can see that there are no changes pending that need to be deployed. So let's make a change. If we navigate to Objects, Object Management, and then select Interfaces from the left-hand menu, we can make a change to one of the existing security zone objects. For this example, we'll just change the name of the in-zone object and call it Secure in-zone. We'll save the changes and confirm the prompt telling us to deploy the policy for the changes to take effect. Now, when we navigate to the deployment page, we can see that we have three devices in a pending state. Selecting the preview icon, we can see what changes have been made. The configuration change log window highlights the changes made between the version of the configuration that is currently deployed in the managed device and the version of the configuration that exists on the Firepower Management Center. The legend in the top right shows us the items highlighted in green are newly added, items highlighted in blue have been edited, and items highlighted in red have been removed. If we select the Objects option on the left-hand side of the change log window, we can now focus in on the change we made to the security zone object, which is one of the enhancements included with this release. Now let's take a look at the changes that have been made to the audit log. As I discussed earlier, one of the components that this release now tracks from an audit trail perspective is the Managed Device Platform Settings. So if we navigate to Devices, Platform Settings, and then edit the Platform Settings policy for the device NGFW1, we will be able to see how these changes are recorded in the audit log. If we, for example, enable the HTTP server on the Managed Device and add an IP address and security zone for the configuration. We click OK to save the changes and then save the platform settings policy. We can now navigate to system, which is the, the gear icon in the top right hand corner. And under the monitoring section, we can select audit. I'll open the audit log in a new tab so that we can switch between views quickly. So the audit log view shows all of the changes that have been made to the system by each user. And here we can see that the managed device platform settings for NGFW1 has been edited. By clicking the show changes icon in the table, we now get a view of the changes made, when they were changed and by whom. 
You will also notice that the format and presentation of the audit log changes replicates that of the configuration preview we showed earlier. This provides a uniform view of changes made to help simplify workflow. As we added a new object to the HTTP server settings, this change is highlighted in green. Now let's close this audit log and return to our platform settings page. If we delete the object we created earlier and then save the changes, we can return to the audit log page and refresh the view that we have. This now shows our most recent changes, and we can also see that the audit tracking number has incremented by one. If we click on the show changes icon again, this confirms the fact that we have removed the object from the HTTP server settings in the platform settings policy, again, using the same color legend as we saw in the configuration preview, the red highlight now indicating that the object was removed. To demonstrate one of the other components that is now included in the audit logging, let's navigate to Devices, Device Management, and let's edit the device NGFW1. If we switch to the Routing tab, we can select one of the dynamic routing protocols. In this case, let's do OSPF v3, and let's enable the process. Save the changes, and now let's go and refresh our audit log page. We can now see that a change was made to the routing configuration of a device. And if we click on the Show Changes icon, we can see that changes were made to the OSPF v3 process, again, including when and by whom. Reversing these steps and disabling the OSPF v3 process allows us to demonstrate how these changes are reflected in the enhanced audit log management within the 6.7 release. Now, as we return to the audit log page, refreshing the table and viewing the changes shows us that the OSPF v3 process has been disabled. And we can see this as it's now highlighted in red. Thank you for taking the time to watch this update video. There is more content available covering the other new features in the 6.7 release, as well as new content covering topics associated with the Cisco Secure Firewall. Hope to see you again soon.